Okay, so here we are at section 3.2, the if-else statement. And again, there's a video here from Tony Gaddis, so don't forget if you're, uh, you know, want to check out his video too, go for it. Uh, it's nice to get someone else's perspective on things. Okay, so with this section, last time, uh, in section 3.1, we used the single alternative decision structure, which meant we had an if statement, we tested it. If it wasn't true, we just simply skipped out of that and kept going. Well, this time we're going to have duals. So this time we have two possible paths of execution. So now we're going to have one here if it's true. So if this condition, whatever condition we have, like, you know, X greater than five, uh, then something will execute here. If it's not, it's going to go down to else and run these little statements, right? So these will execute, okay? So we don't skip by. So we have our two, this one and this one so that's where we get dual right so as you look at the way this is laid out uh again our if uh you know line that we have here so we have this we have whatever condition we have a colon then we have spacing underneath here so whether it's a tab a couple spaces whatever as long as you're consistent you're fine uh and then we have else but else comes back the e is equal to the i very important okay so and then you see a colon here you don't have to write the opposite of this right so if it, this is x greater than five else just covers it you don't have to say else you know less than five whatever it might be right so um you don't have to worry about that you just say else colon you're done okay and then we have the same tabs you know spacing here that we do here okay so so really important there so keeping these aligned keeping this stuff working is the way it goes okay so now let's take a look at a program so this particular one here we have our our program the uh, the old temperature less than 40 and I know we talked about this last time too. Uh, and so in this one if the temperature is less than 40 degrees it's true it's gonna print a little cold isn't it okay on the dual side, when we flip back over here, if it's not less than 40, it's false. It will print this nice weather we're having. So this link will bring you over here, and here is the program. So the code that we have, we're just simply, we, we have a, a variable name here, temp. We're asking for this temperature from the uh, user. The user is going to give us the temp, and here's our test. So we're going to say, okay, if temp is less than 40, here's our first piece. If it's not, it will come down here. So when this is executing... Uh, if the temperature is 50 degrees, it's going to skip this, go straight down to here and say, okay, yeah, nice weather we're having. If we wanted to come out of this code, just simply hit enter, and then we've got something else that we're doing while we're, you know, doing whatever here. Okay, so, um, and that brings us out of this if-else statement. Okay, let's take a look at one more. Because this is kind of a common one, so I like this one a lot. All right, if I come over here. And, um, and you can see with this little piece here, we have, uh, for this program, it's a payroll program. So here is the payroll program. And this is um, actually, I was able to squeeze all this into the screen. Uh, so we have, uh, you know, variables up here that are, that are uh, you know, where we're setting things. Again, so base hours equals 40, overtime multipliers 1.5. Again, I would argue that these are constants and should be all caps but that's just me maybe uh all right so then we have our hours and our pay rate so we're asking the user for those and then here's our if else statement okay so what i want you to really notice is how they set this up okay so in this code so the first thing that it's checking the, the if statement up here we're saying if hours is greater than base hours okay so this particular employee, did they work more than 40 hours? So they're testing it right away and they're saying, did they work more than 40 hours? If the answer is no, let's say they only work 40 hours, they work 32 or whatever it might be, you skip all of this. So none of this is done. And you just roll down here to else and you do what would be the normal calculation for payroll that week. Gross pay is going to be hours times pay rate. And then it will print it out here. Okay, let's take a look. And what happens when you have hours over? So let's say you did 45 hours, right? So hours, well, the 45 will be greater than the base hour of 40. So then we're going to come down here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say overtime hours equals, and we have to calculate out uh, what our hours are minus the base hours. So this would be, if I said 45, it would be 45 minus 40. So it gives five overtime hours. Then it calculates that in this one, then adds in the regular base hours times pay plus the overtime pay. Okay, so it does all of the overtime calculation, adding it all up, doing all that kind of stuff. And when this is done, when this comes down at the end of line 20, 
you'll see uh, when you run this, you'll see it will skip the this else stuff. It doesn't care about this because this was true. The section, the if part was true, so it doesn't need to worry about else. So we'll come come from right here, and it will just roll down here and do the print statement and print that thing out. So run this, play with it, and you'll see uh, as you run numbers uh, how it actually works. Okay, it's kind of a fun program.